Today is episode 10 with Dr. B and the third Ask Dr. B show. Welcome to the Harness Your ADHD Power podcast. If you're looking for a fresh perspective and actionable steps on hot topics from focus to follow through to self-management and more, you are in the right place. Welcome your host, innovative educator, coach, and psychotherapist, Dr. B. Hey, ADDers. I'm so glad that you could join me today for my podcast show. As many of you know, I love asking questions as well as answering them. If you listened to last week's Ask Dr. B episode, you know that I realize that I've missed knowing specific questions that people have and answering them. So I added this Ask Dr. B format to meet both your needs and mine. And just so you know what's coming today, the Ask Dr. B format will have no more than three questions per show, answered directly via story or a blend of both, and a favorite quote of mine. So if you have questions, here's how you can get them to me. Head over to my website and under podcasts, you'll see on the right side of that section, the Ask Dr. B button. Just click the button and ask your questions. It's really simple. I'll be notified immediately and get to work on them for the next Thursday show. And in the event that your question is outside the scope of my license or practice and or my knowledge base, I'll find a guest who can address your question and have them do so on one of the regular Monday shows. Either way, you will get answers to the best of my ability to provide them. And just in case you want to know what kinds of questions people have asked me in the past, here's a few examples. Why is it called attention deficit? when it is really that we're paying too much attention to things and so interested. Has the definition of ADHD evolved since the time that it was first conceived as a disorder? And how was ADHD discovered? You know, your questions matter to me. In fact, we are definitely a curious bunch and deserve to get our questions answered. I know that I certainly have had and continue to have lots and lots of questions, and I need to get them answered or else I spin or ruminate on them. Perhaps that's you too. If you've been listening to any of my previous podcasts, you've heard me say that you are not what you do or don't do, that you are more than that. We are not defective or less than as people, as human beings. We're just wired differently. And the difference is actually pretty cool once you have answers to your questions, understand what needs doing by you, and have the tools to get yourself where you want to go. And it's my hope that you'll get some of what you need here. And remember, I'm a work in progress just like you. I've learned a lot about how to quiet my challenges and make the most of my gifts once I got the information I needed. And I trust that you will too once you get what you need. Before I get to the questions and answers, I have a question for you. And you've heard it before if you're a regular listener. It's all about your wins and your state of mind. I can't emphasize this enough. You are the meaning maker of your life. You say it's been a good day or a bad day, depending on the meaning that you give to the events of the day. You know, I talk a lot about wins, why? because having or cultivating a wins mindset is magical. So have you been taking the time to look for your wins, to notice them, to celebrate them, to share them with others who appreciate what a big deal they are for you and celebrate with you? And are you doing this every day? I sure hope so, because there is truly magic in all of this. And what do I mean by wins? They are those little things that happen every single day that are good things, positive things in the bigger picture of your life. And yet they go unnoticed, unacknowledged, and uncelebrated by you. It takes shifting your mindset, and it's totally worth it. Please do not be the person who continues to tell yourself that it's pointless to reward yourself for the necessities of life, what's expected of you. That could not be further from the truth. 
Those are the very things that deserve to be celebrated so that it becomes easier for you to do them consistently and more enjoyably each and every time. So what'll it be today? If you made an appointment that you've needed to make for some time, it's a win. If you tidied up a little bit around your home, it's a win. If you went to the market because you needed groceries, it's another win. If you needed to get a repair done on your car and you got it done, that's a win. If you were completely out of clean clothes and you did your laundry, that's a win. And if you put them all away, that's a huge win. You get the point. Celebrate all of them. And none of this half-hearted celebrating. Mean it. Exaggerate your emotions. Yes. Wow. Awesome. And certainly celebrate the big ones too. It's just that they happen less often. And so celebrating daily wins makes a difference faster in your life because of the frequency. Shifting gears now. Today's episode is all about answering the questions that you have about issues or challenges that you experience as an adult living with ADHD and offering you hope. How much time do we have? Not much. So let's get to it. Thanks to you, my listeners, for today's questions. How can I stimulate my brain naturally and feel excited about life while remaining calm? Being considerate, how can I tell someone I know that they might have ADHD? What advice would you give to someone like myself whose mouth can often move faster than his or her brain about keeping such behaviors in check? This podcast is sponsored by Pure Potential with Dr. B. You can head over to drbarbaracohen.com and find the podcast show notes, great free content from Dr. B, plus programs and services. That's drbarbaracohen.com. Now back to being an adult with ADHD in today's world. You know, there's a lot of different reasons why you have the questions that you do. It's possible that you have lots of misinformation or you're missing steps or strategies or a philosophy or an understanding of yourself well enough to make good decisions on your behalf. Everybody's reasons are different and I'm grateful for the opportunity to be here to answer what I can for you. I'm going to share each question with you, share a little about the topic, offer my point of view about what I hear within the question, where it's appropriate, and my response to each question which includes an action step to take. Yep, there's an action step for each question because just hearing an answer isn't enough. You need to take action or nothing changes. So don't let yourself off the hook. You do have the ability to respond to your needs. And I hope at least one of these topics or questions will resonate with you and be of benefit. So let's keep going. Thank you to Sarah in California for the first question of, how can I stimulate my brain naturally and feel excited about life while remaining calm? She shared and asks, I feel like I'm addicted to the adrenaline high I get when I'm against a deadline and I have to rush. How can I make life as exciting and get those natural highs even when life is calm? And related to her first question, she asks, I find myself using caffeine, sugar, or the adrenaline rush of being late as stimulants if I'm feeling uninspired or unmotivated. I know that my adrenals can burn out with too much caffeine, and I just heard about making natural ginger tea, so that might help. I also find spicy things stimulating. What are some non-harmful pick-me-ups that I can use to stimulate my brain when I'm feeling down or checked out? So first, thanks for your questions, Sarah. And even though there are actually two questions, I'm going to roll them into one and respond. From your question, what I'm assuming is that you have a belief or an association that life is exciting when you feel that rush, when you feel that adrenaline or that high. And that when you don't feel that rush or that high, it isn't exciting. And if you made the meaning that because you aren't experiencing that high feeling, that you are low or depressed, that could lead to the experience of being depressed 
at least temporarily. Just a thought. And when you aren't feeling that high or that rush, you might feel that there's something missing or something wrong. And you might even go as far as to create situations in your life where you're running against a deadline and you have to rush so that you can have this feeling, this high, and you can feel that life is good. Again, just a thought. A way that I've come to view life is that there's a natural high to living that doesn't come from drama or rushing or urgency, but rather from the natural drama of life unfolding itself. I find that getting absorbed in life gives me a high of sorts. I know I looked for an alternative to the high that comes from urgency or rushing or deadlines because those sensations really don't feel very good to me because I associate them with feeling anxious and I don't care for that feeling. I discovered this feeling high on life feeling by going deeper into life experiences, taking my time with them, exploring them, learning what I can from them, and being curious and excited all the while. Here's an example. There's a tree in front of my home, and for years, I never knew how the tree transformed from losing its leaves to being fully green again. It just seemed to happen, and I missed the transformation year after year. So one year, I decided to do a photo shoot every morning of the transformation, and I learned the secret of the tree. It was awesome. I even stopped people along the sidewalk in the morning and I asked them if they knew what happened to the tree every year because I wanted to share the experience with others. Some listened and chatted and others just walked by. It didn't matter. I was excited by my new discovery. I share this quick little story because there are many ways outside of you that you can bring into your awareness and life experience to arouse your senses and wake you up other than caffeine. As to what you could do or use to perk yourself up during the day when you're feeling down or checked out, the first thing that comes to mind is aerobic exercise or activity. Jump rope, jumping jacks, rebounder, treadmill, bicycle, walk, jog, anything to get your brain oxygenated and lively again. There's a lot of research to support the use of exercise for those of us with ADHD to clear our minds and jumpstart our energy again. Another thing that's useful to perk yourself up is fidgeting. Fidgeting is a very useful tool to help you to focus and activate your brain. Whether you fidget with a pen, a pencil, your hair, a stone, whatever's handy, it's the fidgeting itself that's activating, just like rocking in a chair, for example. So recapping your question of, how can I make life as exciting and get those natural highs even when life is calm? And what are some non-harmful pick-me-ups that I can use to stimulate my brain when I'm feeling down or checked out? I would suggest that you check in on the meaning that you've given the adrenaline rush and whether or not it's what you associate with life is good. And if it is, that you consider expanding your meaning of life being good to things other than the rush. And if the rush is important, then exploring where you can find natural rushes like my tree story and have things to go to for a natural rush that fits you. And for the natural stimulation, I highly recommend exercise because the research and science behind it is solid, and there are so many additional benefits beyond the quick lift. I hope this has been of benefit. Transitioning to our next question. Thank you to Brenda in California for the second question of being considerate. How can I tell someone I know that they might have ADHD? My first thought is intention and why you want to tell them. So that's what I would suggest you get clear on first. Is it that you find their behaviors annoying and hence want to tell them? Or do you want them to get help as you did because you care about them? Assuming that you want them to get help like you did, I suggest the following approach. Sharing about yourself and your own ADHD, I find is the best way. It's what I typically do. Something like, I don't know if you'll relate, 
but I'd like to share something with you about an experience I had. About 14 years ago, I was having a lot of difficulty managing my life. Things that used to be less challenging had become much more challenging, and I didn't know why. I thought that maybe I wasn't as attentive to my responsibilities as I used to be, but that didn't seem to be right. I was surfing online and I came across an article on adult ADHD, and it was as if they had written the article just for me. The next day I was speaking with another friend of mine and told them about the article that I read, and they smiled and said that they were glad that I found the article. I was a little hurt that they seemed to know all along that this is what was an issue for me, but they never said anything. I felt that if they were as good a friend as I felt that they were, that they would have said something to me and not left it to chance that I would find and read an article online. I'd like to be the kind of friend that I wish my friend had been to me and would like to share the article with you in the event that you might relate to it. Perhaps not entirely, but it might shed some light on what you've been sharing with me lately. And if not, no big deal. I just wanted to make sure to share it with you in case you could benefit from what it said. Certainly not that long, but sharing about my own experience rather than telling someone about his or her own experience or situation, I find is a much better way to go. That's what I've experienced. And I'd like to say something else about this question, and that is that there are so many lookalikes for ADHD that we really need to be careful about jumping to conclusions that someone we know has ADHD just because what we observe in them and know is true of ourselves. I'll give you a few examples of what I mean. Georgia is an adult who suspects that she has ADHD and is satisfied with her self-diagnosis. She's done a lot of research online and taken numerous online tests, and they all say that ADHD is highly probable, and so she's convinced. One of the many symptoms that Georgia relates to is the busyness of her mind, the cognitive hyperactivity, as it's often referred to. However, what hasn't been considered is what is the busyness in her mind? In other words, what kind of thoughts is Georgia's mind busy with? Are they just random thoughts, one leading to another on a stream of curiosity consciousness? Or are they thoughts of worry or concern or anxiousness, kind of a state of hypervigilance where her mind is definitely busy. However, the busyness is for self-protection or safety reasons, not random thoughts. Get the difference? Without really understanding what's going on and why it's going on, it's too easy to assume that the source of symptoms is from something that it's not, and hence miss the real source. Another example. Years ago, someone came to me for an assessment for ADHD, and if confirmed, they wanted a referral to a psychiatrist for medication. As I took a comprehensive history and listened very carefully to what the person was sharing with me, red flags were raised in my mind, lots of them that told me that important issues needed to be ruled in and ruled out before a diagnosis could even be considered. I made a referral to a colleague for a quantitative EEG, and it was determined that 80 to 90% of their ADHD symptoms were coming from mild traumatic brain injury and not ADHD. This mild injury came from years of playing head contact sports as a kid. Instead of a referral to a psychiatrist for medication, which was not warranted, they underwent remedial neurofeedback sessions that help resolve the mild traumatic brain injury in their case, and their symptoms disappeared. They no longer appeared as or functioned as someone who seemed to have ADHD. That one experience taught me the importance of paying close attention to everything that's being shared with me and not prematurely coming to a conclusion because it seems like it's the right diagnosis. I hope this has been helpful and gives you some ideas about how to speak with your friend and that you might even add something about making sure beyond the initial suspicions. Transitioning to our next question. Thank you to Danny in California for the third question of 
What advice would you give to someone like myself, whose mouth can often move faster than his or her brain, about keeping such behaviors in check? He shared and then asks, One of my ADHD symptoms is a tendency toward oversharing in social situations. Some of this has to do with impulsiveness, but some is because I seem to lack certain social filters. This has been a problem on dates, sharing too much too soon, and also in job situations, sharing unsolicited opinions, personal politics, or even private information. What advice would you give to someone like myself, whose mouth can often move faster than his or her brain, about keeping such behaviors in check? The feeling of urgency or anxiety or worry, even at a non-conscious level, can be one reason that causes people to share too much too soon. In part, it can be because having to pace oneself and wait for the appropriate time for things could be very difficult to control for. Kind of like getting it over with and then you can relax. Or if someone is missing an understanding of the timing and cues of when and where and with whom you would share, it would make sense that the information just comes out when and how it does, as you say, too much, too soon. The same with sharing unsolicited opinions, political politics, or even private information. Also with these situations, if there's a lack of rapport with the other people, their responses could be much worse than, the, than if there is rapport and they just shrug it off and move on. Check in with yourself about anxiety issues, often referred to as excessive worry by men, in my experience. Are you feeling uncomfortable or stressed or anxious, so you blurt out things to relieve the stress or the tension that you experience? Before looking to keep these behaviors in check, I'd start by looking at what's driving the behaviors, because if the driver is unaddressed, then we could be looking at behavior modification strategies forever and still not get the upper hand because we're only playing around with the symptoms and not the underlying issues. Make sense? I hope so. I'd like to say a little more about this issue. The impulsivity and hyperactivity that often comes with ADHD can also be helped with a regular meditation practice that teaches you to pause before blurting as well as calming your nervous system and training it to function less impulsively. There are many forms of meditation to choose from, both moving meditation and seated. What's awesome about the human brain and mind is that it's teachable, trainable, and adulthood is as good a time as any to teach your mind to behave in ways that you want rather than in the more unruly way that it might be right now. Also, the foods that we consume may be playing a very important role in the overstimulation that many of us with ADHD experience that goes way beyond just eating healthy. There are genetic conditions and sensitivities that I'm just learning about, and I'll be bringing you further information about this topic in a separate podcast episode, most likely with a guest. That's it for our three questions today. I wanna thank Sarah, Brenda, and Danny again for their questions for the Ask Dr. B format. Remember, your questions matter to me. If I'm going to help make a difference in your lives, I need to know what your challenges are, what you're struggling with. Help me to be there for you by reaching out with your questions. And now a favorite quote. Ralph Waldo Emerson said, for every minute you remain angry, you give up 60 seconds of peace of mind. The question I have for you at this point of our journey together is, what are you angry or frustrated or unhappy or overwhelmed about with regard to your life with ADHD? And are you ready to embrace peace of mind instead? I appreciate you showing up to listen today and in the future. New episodes will be available twice a week now on Mondays at 6 a.m. Pacific time, where I'll be talking about such compelling topics as analysis paralysis, making friends, and more hot topics, as well as lining up guests to bring more great insights to you. And on Thursdays at 6 a.m. for Ask Dr. B, where the questions that you submit to me will be answered to the best of my ability. 
be sure to subscribe to this podcast and keep coming back. In fact, if you receive value today, please rate the show and write a thoughtful review on iTunes so I know that I'm meeting your needs. It means a lot to me to know that your life is getting a little bit better every time we get together. And remember to subscribe so that you receive every episode as soon as it's available. And then be sure to get over to my website to get your show notes and learn about other services. That is, if that's of interest to you. Thanks for listening. Until the next time, bye for now. Thanks for your undivided attention. If you're hungry to make positive changes in your life, head over to drbarbaracohen.com and see how Dr. B can help you today. Whether you love making changes with one-to-one attention and community support or on your own with self-study or could benefit from coaching or psychotherapy, you'll find all the information right there at drbarbaracohen.com.